Hello, everyone. Welcome to another automation webinar with Benchmark Email. My name is Daniel Miller. I'm the marketing director for Benchmark. Um, we love doing these webinars to really um, get feedback from um, users in regards to how they're using automation. And of course, most importantly, to share um, you know, strategies and tips of advice in regards to automations. So um, if automation is totally new for you and you'd like to learn more about how you can automate some of your email marketing uh, practices, this is the webinar for you. If you already know all about automation and you would like to take it to the next level, this is also the webinar for you. Um, and if you're just kind of curious about what's this talk about automations, what does it entail, is it complicated, is it hard, is it easy, uh, this is also the perfect webinar for you. Uh, so in this webinar here today, we're going to go over uh, the two automation platforms that we have here on Benchmark Email. We're going to talk about um, our regular basic automation software, and we're going to talk about Automation Pro. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to create a welcome series. Uh, the webinar normally lasts about 30 minutes, uh, and it is uh, you are able to ask questions. So you'll notice there um, in the webinar area, there is a box to ask questions. Feel free to ask your questions as they come. Um, I still see there's a lot of people joining in, so uh, I want to allow a little bit of time to allow everyone uh, to get settled in. Um, I want to make sure that no one misses the important stuff here that, that we're going to talk about. In the meanwhile, let's uh, quickly go over a little bit about um, what we're seeing here on screen right now. Uh, as soon as we log into a Benchmark email account, uh, this is the dashboard that you'll see. Uh, in order to get to our automation tools, you'll be able to see here at the very top we have Automation Pro. And then under Tools, we have Regular Automations. So just to get started, I want to briefly talk about the Regular Automations tool. Um, because where the real power is, is with Automation Pro, and that's where I would like to spend the majority of our time here today. So when I click on Automations, we notice that we have two different types of automations that we can create. One based on someone being added to a list, and the other one uh, based on someone uh, engaging with a previous email. So let's say that I have a special promo, uh, and uh, you know it's a special sale that I have, and anyone that doesn't open that email, or that doesn't click on a specific link to go to my website, I would like to maybe follow up with them with a additional email. This would be the perfect automation to use for that, okay? This other one is just simply someone being added to a list and it allows you to create a sequence of emails to be sent out to whoever gets added to that list. Um, so as an example, let's say um, anybody that signs up to Benchmark Email we may have a sequence of emails prepared that we want to make sure any new sign up they receive these six emails. And those six emails may teach you about how to create an email, how to upload your list, how to keep your subscribers organized, how to create a sign up form. So those educational pieces that we want to send to anybody that's new to Benchmark, we may want to use this type of automation for that. Okay? So as I mentioned, we don't want to dig too deep into these automations. Uh, and for that case, I'm going to go back to the dashboard. And we're going to take a closer look at Automation Pro. The good news about Automation Pro is pretty much any type of automation that you can create with the basic automations, you can create this with Automation Pro. The only automation that makes sense to create with the regular automations is birthday automations. Uh, if you have, if you like to create a annual reminder or an annual email to go out to your subscribers, it could be based on the day that they signed up. It could be uh, based on a birth date that they may have. Whatever that could be, anything that has to do with annual emails, you would use the automations tool uh, with the uh, contact list type automation to set that up. Everything else you can pretty much do with Automation Pro. So, and, and the power that we have with Automation Pro is incredible. So let's talk a little bit about you know, what's the need and why did we decide to create this powerful tool for automations. Well, when, uh, when we saw the evolution of email marketing and where that was going towards, we saw that there was a lot of things that, in a way, are repeated tasks. Repeated tasks such as anytime someone would abandon your cart, you would want to create an automation to follow up with that person with that same email, uh, I'm sorry, with an email with maybe the product that they left in their cart. Anytime somebody would join your mailing list, you would want to set up 
an automation to welcome that person. Uh, we notice common patterns of, you know, anytime a promotional email or a newsletter would be sent out, a lot of, a lot of our users would want to follow up with people who didn't open or didn't click or didn't visit certain pages on the website. So that's where we where it started to show that we need a tool like Automation Pro to allow all of our users to do those type of things. So here we are with Automation Pro. Um, in this tool, I think one of our staff members, Freddie, said it better. Um, this tool allows you to send the right email to the right person at the right time. That's exactly what this tool allows you to do. It allows you to set up your own customer journeys, your own customer flow, and depending on where your customer Depending on your customer's behavior and what they do, you can have different paths of email series for each one of your customers, okay? So in this webinar here, um, I wanna uh, keep it simple, but also show you the power, open your mind as to what you can do with Automation Pro with certain tips um, and tools that we have available for you, okay? Um, so I wanna make sure that we have everyone seems to be settled in. I don't see as many people joining in now, and I want to see, is there any questions right now I'm going through? Uh, just to make sure that everyone uh, knows how to use the question box, uh, if you could just uh, tell me where you're calling in from. I think that's always fun to see where people are calling in from. Uh, we always get people from all over the world, and that's the magic of the Internet. I love that. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's, get, let's uh, continue on. And what we're seeing here is this is the dashboard for Automation Pro. Um, all of the automations that you create will live here. Uh, and a cool thing, which we're going to get to in just a little bit, you can have certain automations work with each other. So I'm going to give you that tip. That, I think, is the biggest eye-opener that I can give you when it comes down to using automations, is learning how, learning how to use Automation Pro to have automations work with each other. Meaning, if somebody goes through a specific automation, at the very end of the automation, when you drop them off, what would you like to do with that contact? Do you just, you know, do they just go out of the automation and nothing else happens, or do you place that contact into another automation to keep the marketing flow going? So let's go ahead and let's talk about that. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple welcome series. Okay. So what is a welcome series? A welcome series is a series of emails that you may send to new subscribers. Um, to give you an example, let's say that uh, we have a, a sign-up form on our website, and anybody that signs up through that form, I want to send them a series of emails to welcome them. Now, people that sign up from my website may get a different welcome series than those that sign up from my Facebook account and those that sign up from a different source. So I'm just going to put welcome series uh, Facebook for now. So let's imagine that I had a sign-up form on my Facebook page. I'm going to save this. I want to create a welcome series for anybody that signs up from Facebook, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm going to go into this automation, um, and we're going to move forward. What we're seeing here is a canvas. This is the, um, the Automation Pro canvas. It allows you to pretty much create your automation freely. You can go left to right, up and down. You can go wherever you prefer. Um, I'll also be giving um, at least a preference tip that I have in regards to how to keep your automation properly organized here with the canvas. Okay, so what we see here is um, a point here that says uh, create trigger. This is what triggers the automation. This is what starts it all. So um, when I click on the possible triggers that we offer here, it is somebody being added to a list, somebody being added to a segment, somebody visiting a specific area of your website, or the trigger could also be based on a date and time. When you select the option of date and time, this will also um, have you choose what list would you like to uh, focus on. Of course, the list is just to know who are the contacts that it will be sending to, but the trigger would be the date and time um, that you set. Up here where we have added to list or added to segment, we have various options based on, let's say that I choose a list. I'm going to say, um, let's see, new subscribers. There's our list. I'm going to save this. And now we have one of three options to choose from. Do I want to choose everybody that's existing on this list? Do I want to choose existing subscribers only, meaning if I activate this automation right now, only the existing contact on the list now would receive the automation that we're about to build. Anyone added newly in the future, they would not receive it. 
or we can do new subscribers only. So what this means is um, when I, if I create this, let's say that there would be 10 subscribers on our new uh, subscribers list right now. Once I activate this, the automation would not affect the 10 subscribers that are existing on the automation now. It would only affect anyone added to the automation in the future, well, to the list in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. Uh, and I see that there's a question that just came in, which is, can I create, um, I'm sorry, uh, can I choose multiple lists at a time to do a trigger? Yes, you certainly can. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to edit this. Uh, I typed in new, but if you scroll out, we see that we have one list selected. You can add as many lists as you would like to uh, have this trigger the automation. Uh, the one thing that I would like to say, though, is, Make sure to keep your automations organized. It's really easy to kind of cram things into uh, one list. Uh, we highly recommend to, uh, to keep, if, if you have the list separated for a reason, you may want to create an automation uh, specifically for that list. Um, remember, one thing that, that uh, email marketing has a lot of power to is how personal you can really be. The more lists and the more uh, segments that you can create to really talk to your subscriber, I think the better. So for this specific case, we actually have a new subscribers. I'm actually going to check that. I'm going to create a new list. I'm going to say new subscribers from Facebook. Okay. So this really allows us to create a different marketing story depending on where they're coming from. So I'm going to say new subscribers from Facebook. And what I may want to do is just the welcome series that we introduce to these people. We may want to adapt it more to the conversation that we're having on Facebook versus somebody that may come from our blog, that welcome series may be geared towards uh, some of the blog content. I will also help you strategize. If someone's coming in through Facebook, you probably know that they already like your Facebook page. You may then want to promote the blog, versus if somebody's coming in from the blog, you know that they probably know about your blog and they've subscribed to it. You then may want to promote your Facebook page to say, hey, for tips and tools, and you know, cool insights to our tool, follow us on Facebook. So again, it allows you to kind of continue that story instead of always give a blanket story to everybody that signs up. All right, so let's go ahead uh, and let's continue on. Um, now that we've selected a list to trigger and we've set the trigger that it's gonna happen, it's anyone added to the list newly in the future, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna now set an action, okay? so. We see in the right-hand corner of the trigger, there's a little plus sign. When I click on this, it pulls up actions or conditions. So for actions, <coughs> as the name itself it explains, these are actions that we can uh, trigger uh, throughout the automation. We can add an action such as a delay. We can send an email. We can move a subscriber from one list to another. Or we can uh, simply remove a subscriber from a list as well. Uh, when we look at the conditions, we see we have a lot of different options for the conditions. We have a condition to check and see if somebody is in a list. Uh, we can see if they're in a segment, if they're not in a segment. We can see if they visited specific areas in our website, and we can see maybe engagements that they've had with previous emails sent, all right? This last one, multiple conditions, allows us to take a look at all of the different conditions and maybe do a combination of them. So we may want to create a condition that says, you know, check and see if they're in this list, if they visited uh, a specific page and they opened email A. That we can do all with one condition by choosing the multiple conditions. Very powerful tools. Um, and as you see here, really, I mean, uh, it's up to the imagination of yourself on what you would like to automate. Because uh, pretty much we can automate just about anything here with the actions and conditions that we see here on screen. So for the welcome series, what we're going to do is uh, we, we're going to choose an action and we're going to do send email, okay? Because as soon as somebody signs up, I want to make sure that that email gets shot out as soon as possible um, to welcome the subscriber. But instead of doing this, I want to kind of go back real quick and I want to open up to our templates, all right? Uh, we actually have really cool templates here that we've recently launched uh, for Automation Pro. And these templates are built on real life scenarios from our users. <coughs> uh, when we had Automation Pro open for beta, we really took a look at what are the type of automations that people would start to build. And we saw that these were really uh, eight of the main automations that a lot of our users would build. 
one of them being a welcome series. A lot of people would also try to promote something and target then the opens, or they would promote something and target clicks, or they would promote something and target everything, opens, clicks, and website engagement. Uh, we have a template for card abandonment, follow-up series, feedback requests, and a review request as well. Uh, when you click on each one of these templates, it gives you a little bit more uh, detail in regards to how to use this, what you're going to see, uh, how to handle each one of these. And then we also include a video which we explain um, how to use this template and as well some uh, cool tips and strategy for each one of the uh, templates and how to use it. So for the welcome series, we're going to go ahead and we're going to load up this template. There we go. Now, we noticed that on the right-hand side, we had our coach pop up. Uh, this is the handy-dandy coach. Uh, anytime you do something on the canvas, if there's a recommendation that the coach can give you, he's going to show up on the right-hand side. Um, a good recommendation that the coach may give is maybe right after you create an email, it may suggest adding a delay after that email. Um, I'll explain why you want to do the delay in just a second, but I just want to take a quick moment to say, the coach, if you ever have a question, you can always minimize the coach down here and go back to the coach by simply clicking on uh, the whistle there, and you can scroll down and see all of the messages that the coach has been telling you throughout your session on Automation Pro. So now that we loaded this template, we see um, something different. We see these little numbers, and these little numbers were to help you from the explanation that we saw earlier, but we also see these red dots. These red dots tell you that there's an action that requires your attention. So right now, what we're seeing here, if we take a step back, we're seeing that this automation is looking at a trigger from someone being added to a list, then an email is being sent out, and then we're adding these people to a different list. So uh, the attention that requires for each one of these is we need to select what list is going to trigger this, what email we're going to send out, and what list we're going to move them to, right? So uh, as soon as I click on the trigger and I edit the list, and let's say we say new subscribers from Facebook, uh, move this up and click save, and we want new subscribers, there we go, we see that the red dot disappears. Creating the email, the same thing, uh, if we were to go through and design the email, we would see that the red dot would disappear. To save on time, I'm, um, I'm not going to go through uh, designing the email, but as a reference, designing an email in Automation Pro is very similar if not almost the same as designing a regular campaign within Benchmark Email. Uh, you'll go through the details, such as the firm name, the subject line, the firm email, and then you would be sent to the editor to actually create the email itself and what you can add, you know, your content, your videos, images, uh, you can customize fields, and so forth. So now let's go to the next step in which it's adding subscribers to a different list. And let's say that I want to edit this and I want to uh, add the subscribers to an existing list. I'm sorry, to existing subscriber list. Now, you may ask yourself, for this welcome series, why would you ever want to do that? Well, it may not be, uh, uh, it, it may not make sense for this simple automation that we have, but let's imagine in a, in a case that instead of just having one email for the welcome series, let's say that we had six. And to go through all six of those emails, it took 30 days. There makes more sense to keep your new subscribers from your existing subscribers in two separate lists. Reason being is in the future, you may want to do a special promotion only to new subscribers or only for existing. And until this subscriber receives all six of those emails within 30 days, they are considered a new subscriber. It's just a different way to keep your subscribers separated, but we see here how easy it is to automate a sequence to have them go through an entire email series and then once that email series is completed, you can move them off to a, a new list, and then you could maybe uh, remove them from the, there we go, from the new subscribers list, just like this. So that way you keep all of your lists well organized, and any future marketing strategies that you would like to plan, it's really easy to target the right audience uh, for the marketing strategy. So again, what we're seeing here is someone being added to a list, we're sending them a warm welcome, which, by the way, here's a quick tip for you. Uh, in regards to sending a welcome email, I see a lot of businesses commit this mistake in which they try to sell too soon. As soon as somebody signs up to their newsletter, they're trying to sell them something. Take this time to really give a warm welcome to your subscriber. Take this time to stand out from your competition. Why, are, why would they want to choose you over anyone else? 
uh, this is the perfect time to really show your company personality and maybe some of the values that you and your company stand for. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that, that tend to say that, you know, people don't, don't buy based on uh, price or things like that. People really ba buy based on feeling. Uh, you know, if, if the product feels good, if, they, if they're browsing through your website and they like the personality from, you know, the, the wording on the site, the way it's presented to them, that's what's really going to bring in uh, long-term customers. When you can engage with them at that level to where, like, it, it feels like a conversation. If it's just buy my product, here you go, you know, if it's just a transaction like that, you may do some sales, but it doesn't really create long-term uh, relationships and connections with your clients. So just kind of keep that in mind when creating your welcome series. Take the time to provide a warm welcome to your subscriber. All right, so I want to make sure that I'm not missing any questions. Uh, I'm going to look through the questions that have been coming in. Uh, if you notice that we don't get to your question right away, uh, that just means that we'll be saving that part for later or that we may respond to you uh, privately, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, in many cases, because we're talking about some automations that can get very personal, meaning personal to your specific case, uh, it may not make sense to share that here with everyone that's joined us, but it may make sense to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo with you. Uh, so again, if we don't answer all, all of the questions here live, uh, that doesn't mean that we're ignoring your question, that just means that we'll either be getting to that later on or that we will answer to you privately. Uh, all right, so let me see if we have any other questions coming in from here. Um, okay, so somebody was asking why why is the template taken from one person to one list to the other list? I hope uh, we were able to explain that. Uh, if anyone needs more explanation on that, please let us know. We like to call these goal-based lists. Uh, in the next automation that we're going to create right after this, we're going to see a better reason as to why these are called goal-based lists. But the bottom line is there's a goal, right? The goal here is from somebody to become, to go from a new subscriber to an existing subscriber. That's the goal. So this list would become the goal-based list. Um, in a case that uh, we're sending out an email and we want to see people who open versus people that don't open, we may set up two different lists. Um, people who open and people who didn't open, those are the two lists that we may create. And those would be the goal-based list for that example, all right? So I want to make sure that we have no further questions in regards to the welcome series. If not, we'll go ahead and continue on. And what I want to do here for this webinar is to really open up our minds in regards to how we can connect different automations with each other. So notice how this automation is starting. This automation is starting by someone being added to a list. And the real-life scenario that we're seeing here is Somebody's browsing your Facebook page. They saw that you have a sign-up form. They like all the content that you post on Facebook. And in order to uh, you know, receive a 10% off or you know, to get more in-depth tips or reports or whatever it is that you would provide through your email newsletter, they can go ahead and sign up through the Facebook. So they're going to go ahead and sign up. And as they sign up, they're going to be added to this list. Once they're added to the list, that triggers the automation and an email is sent. After the email is sent, they're moved to an existing subscriber list. So guess what happens? We're adding new subscribers to this list. What can we do to a list that has subscribers being added to it? We can trigger an automation from that. So let's go ahead and let's do that. I'm going to leave this one here. And uh, remember, a welcome series can be one email or it can be a series of emails. For this example, we're just having one, but you may have, you know, a series of one, three, maybe 16 different emails going out for a period of time to consider them as new subscribers. Once they complete that series, then you can move them over to your existing subscriber list. So let's go ahead and let's save this one and let's exit out of here. We're going to go to automations. So now we have the welcome series Facebook. Uh, let's say that I want to do a first week, week special uh, to new subscribers, okay? So I'm going to name that new subscribers. Now, you're going to notice that the target list that I'm going to have, I'm going to, the trigger, I'm going to choose added to list. And if we follow the sequence that we saw earlier, we're going to choose existing subscribers and we're going to say added newly, okay? So notice how the name of this is first week special to new subscribers, but I'm targeting the existing subscriber list. How does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because I'm only targeting people that are added newly to this list. 
And from the example that we're seeing right now is I only have one email in the welcome series. And what's happening is people are coming in, they're receiving that email, and then they're being added to this list. So they're still considered new subscribers, now going on to the existing subscriber list. As new subscribers going to existing, I want to I wanna, um, send them a first week special. Okay, so how would we do that? All right, we have the trigger that starts with the list. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add an action here, which is a delay. And the reason why I want to add a delay is because I want to wait three days before we actually send this uh, first week special out. So I choose my units, which is three. Uh, I'm sorry, I choose my units, which is days, and I set the number to three. I save this, and voila. Now the system is going to wait three days before doing the next action in which we're going to actually send an email out. Uh, when, you, um, when you click on the uh, send email node, uh, I'm sorry, the send email action, you're going to see a list of emails that you've already created in the past through Automation Pro. Uh, if you've created emails through regular campaigns in Benchmark Email, you will be able to see those emails, but you will not see them here. You will see them when you're choosing a template. So if you go through create new email, uh, let's just go through this process really quick. Uh, let me see. Save this, and we'll choose drag and drop editor. I just want to show you where all of your um, emails that you've created in the past, where they would show up. And you'll notice it takes over to the editor. Just like creating a regular email, you can choose a blank layout, you can choose one of our many templates, or you can choose a past email that, you, that you've created in the past. Uh, right now it's only showing the sample email, but of course this is a test account. Uh, if you have a monthly newsletter or you have a, you know, a promotion mail that you've been creating uh, through the regular campaign format, you would see these emails here and you can pick those up uh, and use them as your template here. Uh, so for this case, I'm just going to use a sample email. And let's imagine that in this email we had a special promotion, and uh, for the button down below we have a learn more. Let's say we want to learn more about whoop, about the special promotion. Change this. Save it, and then we're going to do save and next. Whoops, we got to put in the edges. Put in our edges right there. Go on next. Okay, now, check this out. We got the coach giving us a tip, and it's telling us to use the delay. Now, what's happening here? We have uh, someone being added to a list, a delay, send, a delay. What's up with all of these delays? The delays are very important uh, in the way that this automation works. Something to think about automation is that it's automated. So what that means is unless anything is stopping this, Whoever comes in here is going to go as fast as it can through all of these um, little notes that we see here, unless we set pause moments, which are these delays. So why would we want a delay right here? Well, one of the main reasons that we would want a delay, and I'm actually going to set this to 48 hours, uh, two days, actually. I'm going to choose two days. I'm going to hit save. And then the condition that I'm going to set up, I'm going to set up a condition now. I'm going to check email engagement, all right? So I'm going to go under condition, email engagement, and I'm going to choose the email that we have here, the testing one. And I'm going to choose the has not opened. I'm going to add another condition, has not opened, okay? I'm going to save this. There we go. Once we do that, we notice we have a new node show up, and we see a fork in the road, okay? So I like to put what I like to call the, the pass, the, uh, the path, of success towards the very top, meaning I want all of my subscribers to always be on the high top path here and end over here, has opened. The paths of failure, as we like to call them, meaning they did not achieve the goal that I wanted to, uh, for them to achieve, which was to open the email, are going to go down to has not opened. And this allows me to do, uh, to split up my different types of subscribers and follow up with them differently. So going back to the delay, why do we need the delay here? This was um, one of the questions, well, a few people were asking this question, what's up with all the delays there? Uh, well, one of the main reasons that we need to add the delay here, and actually the main reason that we need to add a delay here, is if we didn't have it, I'm going to delete it, and I'm going to connect 
this node with this one right over here. What's happening here? Someone gets added to a list, we wait three days, and we send them an email. Immediately after that email is sent, it's going to check and see, did they open the email, yes or no? Of course, because this happens literally immediately after the email being sent, while Automation Pro is checking, did they open the email, they probably didn't even receive the email yet. It's still going back, it's still going to space and back to your subscriber's inbox, uh, and the system is already checking, did they open that email? So, of course, it's going to show all of these as false, has not opened. All right. So to avoid that, what we want to do is we would need to add a delay. And the delay, we need to allow enough time for everybody on your list to receive that email and have time to open it. Okay. So for this particular case, I'm going to suggest two days. Most of your emails are going to be open within the first day. Um, a few people tend to trickle in on the second day. So just to be safe, I'm going to set a delay of two days to allow everyone to open your emails. Uh, you may look at your uh, current email marketing reports to see what is your actual stat on when people open your emails. Depending on your uh, subscriber's behavior, you may see that it makes more sense to just do one day. You may see that two days makes perfect sense. Or you may see that you need a full week because your subscribers tend to open your email much slower. So um, I highly recommend to look at your own stats, especially if you've been using benchmark email for some time. Each one of the emails that you've been sending out, you can see the time report uh, in regards to when people, when, when your subscribers are actually opening your emails. Is it within the first 12 hours? Is it within the first day? Or does it take a full week to get the majority of your subscribers to open the email? Um, again, I would focus on the time frame of the majority. Uh, I would say at least 80% or more of your opens. Find what that time frame is. It's most likely going to be within 48 to 72 hours. So keep that in mind. So now what we have is we're sending the promotional email. I'm actually going to change the name of this. Uh, let's say details. I want to change the email name to promotional email. There we go. Actually, no, we're going to change this because this we have it as a first week special. So we're going to say first week special, new subscriber special. There we go. First week special, the first week special email. And now we have the condition has opened, has not opened, all right? Let's just say that we want to keep track of everyone that's seen the special versus people that didn't and follow up with them differently, okay? So for these people that have opened, I may want to add them to a new list. There we go. And we're going to see, uh, I think we have, let me see. Uh, no, we don't have the list created, so we're going to create it. I'm going to create a new list. And we're going to call it first week special opens. All right, I'm going to save it. Now, some of you may ask yourself, why in the world are we adding them to a new list? Couldn't we just follow the automation here? Yes, you certainly could. And that is a total um, preference to, to, to yourself and how you prefer to organize yourself. Um, I tend to like to separate things in stages. Meaning uh, the goal here is to get is to make sure that they receive this email, and then we divvy up and we see okay who are the people that saw the promotion and who are the people that didn't. Based on that, do a different follow up. I tend to like to I do these follow ups in separate automations. The reason being is that it helps me keep everything uh, better organized. I think, um, and at the same time, what it also does is if you ever need to make an edit, let's say that I want to make an edit to this email. If I had 16 different emails here in a whole long sequence, let's imagine I zoom out all the way here. Let's say that I had a bunch of different follow-up emails and we're keep trying to get them to open that email, but now I just want to make an edit to this first email. Guess what's going to happen? I'm going to, I'm going to have to deactivate this, and when I deactivate it, it deactivates all of the emails. So because of that, to keep it easy and to keep it separated, so if you need to make an edit, you can make an edit to a specific area. You can easily just go in, uh, create these separated, and simply do the handoffs by adding subscribers to a new list and creating an automation to focus on that list. As we saw, it's really easy to uh, connect automations, per se, by simply adding them to a new list and then having that new list be a trigger to the next automation. So this one has not opened. We're going to also has um, add to list. We're going to select a list, and we're going to say first week special 
not opened. Okay. Uh, whoops, that was on search. So I'm going to create a new list. There we go. Oh. Special not open. So this is going back to what we were calling goal based list. And this would really help you uh, to uh, keep all of your contacts organized as they're going through your automations. Uh, in many cases, once this promotion is done, you would probably delete these lists and totally ignore it and then create the next promotion and have the next type of goal-based list. Uh, but doing this as well allows you to work outside of uh, benchmark email as well. Uh, you know, let's say that people that did not open, you want to add these people to a list. Uh, using an integration from Zapier, you may be able to add these subscribers to a list on Facebook and maybe do Facebook targeting to those specific subscribers based on people not opening your emails. So, you know, moving people from one list to another gives you such an amount of, of power. Uh, and the possibilities are really endless because we integrate with Zapier. You can pretty much automate anything else outside of Benchmark as well by simply adding or deleting people from a list. So kind of keep that in mind. I think that is the biggest takeaway I want everyone to walk away from here today is the power that you have adding subscribers to a list and removing them and what that can do for you to simply help you organize within your Benchmark email account as well as to automate other things outside of Benchmark with software like Zapier to where, you know, if someone is added to a list, you can take that email and add it to a audience list on Facebook to then do targeted ads to them or add it to an audience list in Google to do targeted ads to them as, as well. So again, the possibilities are almost endless here. So here we saw how to do a follow-up. I want to go back and see if there's any question that I need to answer in regards to this. Uh, there's a few people that are asking on how to track uh, visitors to the website. So uh, let me just make sure there's nothing missing on here. We covered the delay times. Uh, here's a good question. Somebody is asking if we should create the emails ahead of time. Well, just like we saw, uh, you can go through the process of creating a regular campaign just like you would on the regular benchmark email. Uh, if you've created campaigns in the past, uh, they will be saved under your past emails created, and you can just reuse them and change the content there. Uh, so it's really up to you if you want to create the emails uh, beforehand or if you would like to create them on the fly. That's a total preference to, to you. Um, so let's talk about how to track website engagement. <coughs> I'm going to take this as an example. I'm actually going to delete this one here. I'm going to keep these two lists because I want to keep something similar. But instead of um, checking to see if they open the email, I may want to see if they went to the pricing page. Okay. Uh, so let's say I'm going to do a condition and I'm going to say website activity. And actually, I'm not going to use the website activity. The reason being is you'll notice here from website activity, there's only one prompt, meaning there's only one path that it can go down. It is, did they visit the website? Uh, did, did they not visit the website? Does not actually come out of this. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to choose a condition, which is multiple conditions. And I'm going to choose, uh, has visited a URL. And we're going to choose a specific URL. And let's say that you have www.product.com pricing. Let's say that you want to show the pricing page, OK? So, meets the condition. Again, the path of success always towards the top. We're going to add that to this list. Does not meet condition. We're going to go ahead and have that go down this way. Okay. Of course, you would edit these lists uh, to name them instead of uh, first week special has not opened. You would say first week special has not visited website. That's another good tip for your goal-based list. Make sure to keep them properly organized. Uh, we've seen some Users use some codes, and the code, they'll use the name of the automation with the name of the email and the name of the purpose or something like that, and they'll create a code out of all that to properly organize all of their lists so they know what list is list later on. If you just made this list say no opens, then, you know, once you create your fourth list, you're going to be like, wait, is this no opens from that list? Is that no opens from this other automation? You won't be sure, right? So uh, use the name of the list to try to keep your list organized as well. Okay, so we're saying product.com forward slash pricing. That's the page that we're being tracked. So how does this tracking work? What do, do we need to install anything before we can do an automation like this? Yes, you certainly do. 
Uh, and in order to uh, make sure that you can trigger automations from website engagement, you'll see in the top bar here from Automation Pro, there's this little button. And this button follows you on any page for Automation Pro, and you'll see your Automation Pro tracking code. You can simply copy the code by clicking on this button right here. Uh, and if you give these instructions to your web developer, they'll know exactly what to do. Pretty much you just need to install that piece of code in the header of all of your website pages. Uh, why do you need it in all of the pages? Because you never know what the page you'll, you'll want to use to automate. So from your home page, to your pricing page, to your features page, to your about you page, any page we highly recommend to include that in there. Uh, this allows you to pretty much trigger any page to do an, an automation, okay? So once you copy that and you put that in the header of all of your pages, uh, what would happen is when the subscriber receives the email, if they click on the link that goes to your website that has the tracking code on it, that moment is when uh, Automation Pro picks up that this visitor is assigned, I mean, I'm sorry, is... Um, What's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, it's connected to the email address on file. So again, let's say that uh, there's a link in the email. When the subscriber clicks on that link that goes to your website that has the tracking code on it, that is when the connection happens to where Automation Pro says, oh, you are a subscriber followed by whatever the email is, and you are visiting this website, good to know. If the subscriber visits the website without receiving any emails from the past, they just happen to visit the website. There's no way for Automation Pro to know who that person is. But once they go to the website from an email sent from Automation Pro, the connection happens, and Automation Pro will track that visitor for up to six months. That means if they don't get to the pricing page right then and there, but then they go back to the pricing page later on, Automation Pro will detect that and say, oh, we recognize this visitor because we know that you are subscriber, whatever the email, ideas, and we'll start tracking that person as they browse the website. I hope that was clear enough. If anyone has any questions in regards to how the website tracking works, please don't be shy. Feel free to ask anything uh, in regards to that. And we would love to even set up a one-on-one -on -one demo to show you how you can implement this and how this can help you with your business as well. So please don't be shy and feel free to ask questions. So again, in this case, people that visit the website, we're going to add them to a new list. Um, outside of this, we can create a new automation to target whoever gets added to this list and follow up with them. Um, and don't forget, you don't have to follow. You don't have to just follow up. What you could do as well is people that go to the pricing page, you can add them to a new list. And the automation that you create after that is maybe just check and see do they get to the thank you page, meaning do they actually buy something or not, uh, by simply adding another condition saying, you know, uh, after waiting another day did they get to the thank you page? If yes, then you add them to a new list of customers and you follow up with them with an email. If no, then you may want to follow up with them with a cart abandonment type email, maybe um, offer free shipping, 10% uh, off, whatever you think would entice your subscriber to come back to your website. So this pretty much concludes our webinar here for today. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us. And most importantly, I hope that uh, this webinar was uh, useful for everyone here, whether automation is new to you, you're an experience. Um, I hope that this webinar really uh, kind of opened your eyes a little bit about how you can use Automation Pro for your business. Um, don't forget, this is, um, uh, you can contact us, I'm sorry, via phone, chat, or email if you have any additional questions outside of the webinar itself especially as you start to dive in and you start to create your own automations, that's normally when the questions come up. Uh, you can always access our FAQs, our Frequently Asked Questions, and our overall tutorials that we have here in regards to the website tracking, uh, how to activate uh, automations, measuring success, and so forth. And uh, yeah, we would love to hear the type of automations that you're creating. Uh, it's very interesting to see how creative some of our users are getting with these type of tools. Uh, from simply moving subscribers from one list to the other and kind of uh, using Automation Pro uh, just kind of like as a list management system. We've seen subscribers that just do that, but they don't even send out emails. Just based on where the subscribers visit on the website, they tend to move the subscribers from one list to another to then do follow-ups. So it's pretty cool. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, we would love to hear your feedback based on how you use Automation Pro, uh, thoughts that you may have also on new features and functionality. Uh, we would always, we're always improving our product and service, so yeah, the more we can learn, the better. So again, thank you all for joining us here today. It's been a great pleasure. Uh, don't forget, we do these webinars quite often. We used to do them only on Fridays, uh, but now we pretty much do them daily. So um, if you missed anything, you can always come back, um, or you can contact us. We can set up a one-on-one -on -one private demo with you, uh, specifically to your automation needs. So again, thank you, and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you.